Okay, I want to do a quick review of my uh, space-time superposition chart. Now this chart is the first layer of a three-dimensional structure that I would like to call my light superposition cube. It's basically, uh, you know, if you take this chart and lay it down flat on the ground and then you take a second chart and lay it on, stack it on top of it, and a third chart and stack that on top of it, you would basically have three charts with each layer having nine dimensions. And, you know, three dimensionally, it would, it would represent a cube with nine dimensions on each layer. So it's a three dimensional structure where the bottom layer is my space time superposition chart, and that's the chart you're looking at now. And that's what I want to talk about. I don't want to talk about the, the upper layers yet. Um, this video is primarily going to focus on the bottommost layer of my light superposition cube. So the bottommost layer of my light superposition, super, superposition cube is called my space-time superposition chart or space-time superposition chart. This is part of my theory which I've titled Gros Temporal Theory. And basically, the, the theory uh, states that, the theory shows that the missing link in physics today is time. Uh, physicists don't seem to have a grasp of what time is. And I only have a, an, an, an idea simply because this chart started me on a journey. Uh, as you saw in the last video, um, you know how I made the chart and how I just more I say I discovered or realized the chart but it started me on a journey years ago and um, now I'm on the third chart which is uh, the last layer of the um, of a structure within reality that seems to um, uh, to find the uh, interactions of matter, space, and time. Uh, that's just the only way I can describe it. But I want in this video, I want to focus on my space-time superposition chart, which is the bottommost layer, because in order to understand the upper layers, you have to get get a good understanding of the bottom layer, which is what the upper two are built upon. And speaking of that. <coughs> Speaking of built upon, this chart here, all of the nine dimensions on here are built upon the dimensions that come before it. So if we start at the very beginning, which is the first dimension, which I've titled latitude thread, everything else is built upon this. If you think about it, three dimensional space, we have, uh, you know, what I call a latitude vector, or not um, a latitude um, dimension, where things are aligned vertically. And uh, if you take that dimension and you flip it on its side, which is what I call a um, horizontal flip, you will get the second dimension, which is uh, the longitude dimension. And in Euclidean space, you know, you have three-dimensional space, which the first and second dimension, uh, and it produces, if you put the first and second dimension together, you get a two-dimensional space, but really there's no such thing as that. Um, because when you put the first and second dimension together, it produces a third dimension automatically, which produces a neutral position. I think that happens in nature. So, you know, from my years of studying and looking at this, there's no such thing as two-dimensional space. I mean, you can have a two-dimensional plane where you have a piece of paper and you're drawing on it in two dimensions. That's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about in nature, the natural processes that, produced, that produce this reality that we know, um, when you put the, prim the primary position and the secondary position together, you automatically produce a third or tertiary position which includes the 
first position, the second position, and then it also includes a neutral position. A neutral position shows up when you put the first and second positions together. So that's why we have the X plane in the latitude thread and then the Y plane in the longitude thread and then we have three-dimensional space which a z-plane shows up now people say you know the the I had someone tell me that you know Euclidean space doesn't label the X and Y and Z plane like that the Z axis is actually facing up and down and the, you know what you know A B C D E F G H I J K L M N O P you know I learned that in kindergarten X comes before Y Y comes before Z one comes one comes before two <laughs> Two comes before three. So if I'm gonna if one process is gonna be built on the other, I'm gonna start with the lowest one, which is X. And if Y is gonna be built on top of X, I'm gonna put Y next, and then Z is a neutral position, which is comes after X and Y, so I'm gonna put that as Z. So Euclidean space is X, Y, and Z. I mean that's just common sense, but you know, I don't know why they labeled it the other way, but I'm not gonna get into that. You have to I label this way, and I'm not changing it, and that's because everything is built on what comes before and it's easiest when I label these things in the proper order because all these other things are going to come after that so you know and you need to see these planes because later especially when I look at my when you when you start seeing the other stacks you'll understand why it has to be this way so I'm not saying change the normal physics and how they teach people and stuff but in order to understand this theory you have to you have to go by X Y and Z one two and three there's a sequential order to in nature nature is has a sequential order and it's one two three four five six seven eight nine everything's built on what comes before you find that in nature you know everything in nature comes in threes you know so I started with X and then we came with Y and then Z and then we go in reverse we have um, to show you on the on the the time column we have the um, all three of the of them the Z plane at the fourth dimension and then we go to X plane and then Y so you see that these things they change order in the the way they uh, they're positioned but we're gonna get it I'm gonna wanna jump again we're getting into that later so I wanna say that the latitude thread is the primary position the longitude thread is the latitude thread they are the same thing is just in a different position what these are showing you that these are different dimensions of space space it has is compartmentalized there is no single space and modern physics seems to look at the universe like there's just a single universe with one space and that is not true there's too much evidence showing that there is more than one space and we see the interactions with light and other matter showing that these particles are going in and out of this part of space this the part of space that we interact with and the thing about it is that the matter in our body is really interacting with more than one space. See, space as a whole is not a single space. Matter itself occupies more than one space. And it's time that is determining the interactions between these particles of matter. Time is what causes, I don't want to give too much information about my other higher uh, charts, but time is responsible for a lot of the interactions uh, with matter in space and you can just you can see a lot of the interactions you know even just looking at inertia when you are driving a car and you step on the brakes your body wants to keep moving forward because all motion is caused by the flow of time everything all motion any movement in space is caused by the flow of time so when you when you when you in your car and you step on the brakes something is this is really not a force that's that says there's a force that's pushing you or pulling you forward as the car tries to stop your body wants to keep going forward and that effect is no different than the effect of gravity 
gravity and inertia, are, they're all the same thing. They're all time operating in different dimensions. Gravity itself is, is time being compressed into a singularity. And because our bodies are interacting with time, that's what's causing us to stay on the ground. If, if I jump up in the air, you know, gravity pulls me back down, but it's really the compression of space-time that's bringing me down. And so inertia is operating the same way. When you're in a car and you're moving at 60 miles an hour and you step on the brakes, your body wants to keep forward because there's a dimension, which is the ninth dimension, that's causing me to want to keep moving forward. And that's the decompression of space-time. And, you know, um, de space decompression of space-time is what causes inertia. That's the ninth dimension. Um, gravity is caused by the seventh dimension, which is the compression of space-time. And there is another dimension, the eighth dimension, which causes a whole nother effect, but I'm not going to get into that yet. We're not going to talk about it. But I figured out there's, there's other forces besides gravity and inertia, and some of these forces are caused by the eighth dimension, but I'm not going to get into that yet. Um, but these forces, you know, they're calling them forces, but they are pretty much that's what they are. I mean, force is something that, I guess, compels you to do something whether you want to do it or not. It's a natural compelling, you know, I don't know what the, I, maybe I need to look up what the, the Webster's Dictionary of Force is, but, you know, if someone pulls out a weapon on you and they're compelling you to do something, you know, that's, you know, that's, they're applying some sort of force on you, or, or even if it's not a weapon, if it's just some kind of societal force or pressure from your family or, you know, any kind of, you know, force, you have different types of force. If someone just you wants to use physical force, they have, they're bigger than you or they have more muscles than you, and they're trying to force you. If the police or law enforcement comes, you know, they say, you know, the law says this and that, and whether you want to comply with it or not, we're here to make sure that you comply with the law, and we're here in force to force the law upon you, whether you want to do it or not. So it, I look at force as something that compels you to do something, whether you want to or not. Now, you can counter force with other force and you can get into all that. But looking at gravity, you say, well, it's a force. It's, it's a force because you are part of the space-time fabric. You're, the man in your body is a part of that, inter interacting with the space-time fabric. And the fabric itself is Force is, is being forced into a singularity and you're in, you're in an ocean or a river that is flowing in a direction and the you could say the force of that river is bringing you along with it. Now you can fight against that by trying to swim against the tide or swimming against the current, but the current is still there and that's what gravity is. It's a current. We're trapped inside of a giant river that's going into the center of the planet. And that's basically what gravity is and it's pulling everything down into the center of the planet. Now, if you're, go if you're in a river and the river is, is pulling you down to the direction it's flowing and there's a tree nearby and you reach out and you grab the tree out of the, while you're in the river, you reach your hand up and grab the tree, the tree will hold you in place. But the current is still there. So the current goes right by you and you feel the force of the current pulling you even though you're holding on to the tree. You're holding on to the tree the force of the current is pulling you, but guess what? You're not going anywhere. The, the, the current is no longer moving you. You're stationary because you're holding onto the tree, which is anchored onto the ground while you're in the river. Well, that's what's happening when you hit the ground on the, on the planet. The ground itself is keeping you in place, but the, the current is still there going to the center of the planet. And that <clears throat> is taught that force that is compressing to the center of the planet is time itself. It's time. Time is not some abstract concept. It's a physical thing. It's a physical force. It's not, a, not just a physical force. It's a physical object that is just as physical as space. Space itself is physical. Time is space operating in a certain way. Space and time are polar opposites of the same thing. Space 
and time are the same thing as you look at my chart you take one thing is built on the other the longitude thread is built on the latitude thread it's the latitude thread flipped on its side and and then you have you know a neutral position that shows up the Z plane which can take either position the latitude thread or longitude thread that neutral position is neutral it could take it could become either one of those things but one is built on the other and so time is built on top of space because there's a polar opposite you have time on one end space I mean you have yeah time on one end space on the other end and or space on one end time on the other end they're two sides of the same coin so why do we treat time differently than we treat space they're both the same thing just in a different way longitude is latitude flipped on the side they're both the same thing just in a different position time is the same thing as space just in a different position but we treat it like it's something completely different and it's not it's the same thing which means that it has the properties of the, pro the position that is before it so we look at space the latitude thread the longitude thread has the same position has the same properties of, of latitude is just flipped on the side well why do we treat time differently than space we don't we don't need to do that time is just like space it's just in a different position and it has the same properties that space has which means that if space has coordinates you know you can have points in space guess what you can have points in time also you can have you have a destination point right where you're going you have your point of origin and then if you have a graph you have you know the latitude um, positions and the longitude positions and using a graph you can go up and down starting from zero in the middle you can go up or you can go negative or you can go to the right you know positive and you can go to the left negative but using that graph you can plot your position in space and a point of origin and a point and a destination point. You can do that in Euclidean space. You can also do that in time. It's the same thing. Only difference is time is the the like I said in the last video. You take the ends of a of a thread or string and connect them. Time is just a line with the ends connected. You loop back around to where you started from. That's all it is. That's why anything that you find in physics is um, that has either repeating decimal or goes to infinity that is a wall in space in time those are walls when you have a repeating decimal or you go into anything in your mathematics that goes into infinity or infinite that's a wall that you're encountering and that's what time does to space it sets up walls and boundaries in space to separate one part of space from another that's all it is. It's like a structure in space. You have you have one space, and then you have a structure. You take space, and when you loop, when you take those threads and you loop them around and connect them, you create another structure. And that structure can be used to create walls because it's a loop. It's an infinite. So you you take a line, and when you hit that loop, it's like a cul-de-sac. You're driving down the street, and you reach a cul-de-sac. At the end of the street. There are houses there, but you can't do anything but just loop around in that cul-de-sac unless you go back the way you came. That's a wall. That cul-de-sac is acting like time. The street is space, and when you reach the cul-de-sac at the end of the block, at the end of the street, that's time. And you reach the cul-de-sac, you, you can't go anywhere but go loop it back around where you came from. If I take a ball and throw it against the wall, a bouncing ball, I throw it against the wall. It hits the wall, but where can it go? It's like a cul-de-sac. It, 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 it can't go any further. It's got to come back in the direction where it came from. That's what time is doing in space. If you can't go any further, guess what? It sends you back the way you came. 